Hello, Booktube. Um, this week, I'm talking about a book called Battle Mage by Peter Flannery. It's a standalone fantasy novel with demons and dragons and stuff. Let's talk about it a bit more. Hmm? A very brief summary would be that I enjoyed this much more than I expected. But why is that? If I'm honest, I think it comes down to expectations. We'll take a little um, detour here to discuss my last video. Um, that was a review of Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I think maybe I was a bit unfair on that book. And that again comes down to expectations. Now, some of Mr. Sanderson's other series, like Stormlight and Mistborn, have been some of my most enjoyed books of recent years. Possibly my most enjoyed books. So picking up one of his other books, Warbreaker, I had very high expectations of it. And it perhaps didn't meet them. So I was left somewhat disappointed, even though it's probably quite a good book. Moving back to Battle Mage, um, I have an Amazon Prime account, and this book was available on Prime Reading. I saw it, I thought I'd give it a try. It was effectively free. Being free, my expectations of it were quite low, if I had any at all. So having very low expectations of a book, I think made it much easier for it to exceed my expectations, giving me a very positive view of the book. So I'm learning that um, my expectations of a book are quite key in, in how much I enjoy it, I think. So let's talk about the actual book. Um, it is a fantasy novel, mainly about a character called Falco. Fairly traditional fantasy main character, orphan, innate magical abilities. Nothing terribly original there. Now he lives in a world that is kind of in a war against demons from, uh, from the underworld, hell. Uh, who delight in capturing and tormenting human souls. Quite traditional demony stuff. And um, and the armies of mankind, no goblins in this, rather disappointingly. And if there had been, I'm not sure which side they'd have been on. But anyway, the armies of mankind are kind of led by battle mages, ideally paired with a dragon. Yep, there's dragons. I love dragons. Now. There are ordinary mages in this book, which are effectively priests who can learn to do magic through a lot of uh, training and concentration and meditation and it takes them hours to form a spell. Whereas battle mages are a special one in a million kind of person who can just do magic without really thinking about it. Just born lucky. Um, yeah, I'm okay with all that, that's fine. And. And uh, our main character, Falco, he's one of those. The book has quite a rapid start, where um, the town that these characters live in is, is quite quickly overrun by demons, showing that, that the humans are losing this war. But a, um, a little group of teenagers go off to a war academy to train to become soldiers and or battle mages, in the case of Falco. There are a couple of other characters the plot follows, Malachi and Brenna, through the fairly typical academy setting, you get some quite rapid character changes, which I think are probably necessary in a standalone fantasy novel, and was done quite well. Throughout the book, there is an underlying conspiracy, um, kept secret by a corrupt church for hundreds of years, and some of the characters in the book are digging away, trying to unravel this mystery, which is kind of at the heart of why they're losing this war. And I thought that the revelations of, of um, what that secret was and how it tied into the wider plot was really well done. Actually, it all made a lot of sense, more than in other books where I've read that sort of thing attempted. There's quite a few good action battle scenes in this book. Quite well written and I enjoyed them. Um, it's building towards the classic climactic battle against... Um, the lead bad guy, the Marchio de Law, uh, Marquis of Pain demon. 
And and that that name, Marchio de Lore, um, brings me to an interesting point about this book. There are several kingdoms in this book, and, and different sides to the war, and they all kind of loosely equate to a, a medieval European culture. You get snippets of French and German and and Spanish in this book, which which quite quickly gives you an idea of what that fictional nation's culture is like without having to go into a lot of world building. I thought it was a quick and clever way of doing a standalone novel to use ready-made real historical cultures and loosely apply them to fictional nations. I thought that worked very well. And, and while I speak some French and German and Spanish, enough to understand the sentences that were used in this book, you don't actually need any of that linguistic knowledge to follow the book, because it's all translated anyway. So there was something that I thought was quite novel, um, not sure if I've seen that done before, and I thought it worked really well as a mechanism for world building in a standalone fantasy novel. Some fairly effective, if brief, world building, fairly good character development, enough action to keep me entertained, some clever conspiracy based plotting. There was a lot of good stuff in this book, not saying it was perfect. There were maybe one or two things that let it down a bit, and here we're getting a bit spoilery, so I'll put up a warning. Um, I thought Falco was judged a great deal in this book based on the actions of his father, a man who he effectively didn't know, who died when he was very young, and didn't have much to do with his upbringing. So the fact that all of the characters in this book were judging Falco by the actions of his father, I didn't feel it worked. I didn't particularly like that element of it. Um, that was a minor point. A bigger point is that in the final battle, the final climactic battle of this book, the day is kind of saved by three mysterious and largely unexplained characters turning up from nowhere and saving the day. Um, very little backstory to them. I thought that was ridiculous. Um, I thought the same thing could have been achieved by some already established side characters, or indeed Falco and, um, and his core group of friends were doing a fairly good job on their own anyway. So I thought there were a number of better ways that could have been handled, rather than throw in some mysterious characters turning up out of nowhere with dragons that also didn't really make sense. Um, so that was kind of disappointing, but the fact that, that it was largely under control anyway made that fairly irrelevant, so I was willing to let it slide. Overall, I would recommend this book particularly if you can get it for free, but um, I would happily pay money for it. So, so yeah, if you want a standalone fantasy novel, which are fairly hard to come by actually, um, I'd say give this one a go. Uh, bye!